Hello, my name is Paul Fritz, and I am going to show you how to make a run cycle with a character that we've downloaded from Mixamo and applied a quick Mixamo rig to. So, if you missed that, I have that here on my YouTube channel, Paul Fritz Animation, right here applying a quick rig to a downloaded Mixamo character. You can watch that, get the character set up and rigged. So what we're going to learn today is basically getting a character prepped um, and ready to start doing our animation for the run cycle. And some other things I've made available on this channel or on this video are a couple of uh, images that I put together to help us prepare the run cycle. These are reference images. Um, some people use references, some don't. They're pretty much just a guide. You're never going to get your character to be the same dimensions probably as the character we're using here unless you download the exact same character. So anyway, this is actually a Mixamo character, Sophie, that I've downloaded from Mixamo. And then I just uh, cropped out some images that we rendered and put them here into a shot sequence for the contact down passing up. So all 13 frames, or 12 frames rather, 1 through 13. And I will go ahead and show you uh, how to get the character imported, prepped. We're going to make a character set and get everything basically ready for us to start blocking in our rough animation. Okay, so again, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we've set up a proper project. So we're going to go to Project Window. And I'm going to go ahead and name this one. Um, probably run cycle demo and I'm going to go ahead and keep it here in my C drive for my animation demos okay so I'm gonna go ahead and say accept and now I'm gonna go in just to double check make sure that everything's set I'm gonna set my project so file set project and find my run cycle demo and I'm gonna hit set okay there are a couple things I'm going to need. I'm going to need to bring in my Mixamo character that I created. In this case, uh, this was one that I created using uh, Adobe Fuse, then sent to Mixamo and downloaded it and rigged it the same way that I show you in that video. All right, so I'm going to go back into my files. I'm going to find that character and all of the source images that I'm going to use. In this case, it's here in this project. I could just use this project, but I want to go through the process of setting up a proper project. So all my source images are in here, and I'm going to go ahead and open up another file explorer. Go to my C drive. And on here, go into my animation demos, and in this case, my run cycle demo that we're going to go through here open up my source images for this project and in here I already have those run side uh, run uh, reference images as well so I'm going to go ahead and copy them and I'm going to paste them I don't want to pull them out of here so I'm just going to copy and paste them put them into the source images and then back over here I'm going to go ahead and go to my scenes and right here, that's the Mixamo 3D object that I imported, and then I turned it into a T-Pose model here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to my source images here, or my scenes here, and paste it into here. All right, so now I've got everything set up into those folders, I believe. I might have to come back, but you'll see. And now I'm going to go ahead and go to my open scene. There's my T-Pose. I'm going to open it and save this project. All right, so this character, because I did it in uh, Fuse and made some blend shapes with it, this one also has some facial controls. Some of the ones you download from Mixamo may have varying levels of facial controls. Uh, I think there's one on there called Jasper that at least has, uh, or Regina, they both have these eye controls here. I think Jasper has all of these face controls as well. So if you wanted to kind of play around with blend shapes, you could definitely download one of those particular uh, characters, but not all of them have this. So uh, this plugin for the Mixamo 
rig will automatically read what your character has and create the necessary controls for it and automatically bring them in. So for this character, I don't want to do anything with the face right now. So I'm just going to click right up here on the top and I'm going to just pull it up out of the way. I'm not going to hide it. Just get it out of my way. I might decide to do some other things with it later. All right. So now here's my character. This is my Misty character and here are all my controls. What I'm going to do is get my screen set up. I'm going to create a character set. I'm going to get my preferences set up down here. And I'm trying to keep this video down to somewhere around the 10 minute range so that this is a quick, easy tutorial to follow. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to my preferences. So a couple ways to get there. There is this little preference icon down here. And when I click on it, this window pops up right here and I'm going to change this to 24 frames per second right here in the time slider 24 frames per second one and I'm going to do this in 13 frames one so that's going to be 12 frames actually but 1 to 13 of course is 12 frames make sure it's 24 frames per second and if your computer can handle the processing right down here in update view you can either do the active screen or all screens I usually try to do all I'm going to double check to make sure my undo is on and infinite. I'm going to come up here to animation. Now this rig, because of the processing uh, that goes through with this rig, you need to change your evaluation under settings and animation. You need to change it to DG. It's usually defaulted at parallel, but we want it to be at DG. And I'm going to turn on my weighted tangents for right now. And that's pretty much it for our settings. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. If you look down here in your timeline, you'll see that if we click on it, it pops it to one right here. We have everything set up down here the way we want it. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add the character set. If we click down here where it says character set, it says no character set and none right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight everything on this control except for the main control down at the bottom down here this big circle I want everything else I just don't want that included in this and here is my character it looks like even the ones behind the heel make sure you get those it looks like everything has been selected I'm going to come up here make sure I'm in animation I'm going to go to key and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to create character set hit the little option box so you want to create character set not make sub sub character set you can give it a name. I'm going to call this one Misty All because these are all the controls. And I'm going to leave everything pretty much defaulted here. It should be all keyable except scale and visibility. I don't want to key those, so we're not going to key them. We can also do some redirection down here, but we're just going to leave it at the default right now. I'm going to hit Create Character Set. And when I do that, you'll see that down here, it now has my Misty All and then it has a character set. I can go back and forth between None and Misty All. We can also create some sub character sets um, for the legs, arm, arms, and uh, facial, torso, things like that. Um, but in to keep this video short, it's pretty much the same process except you're going to select just the ones you want. So for example, if I just wanted to do the torso, I would come in here and I would shift select just the ones in my torso that I wanted. In this case, it's all the ones right around the chest area here. And I would come back up in here. I'm going to go to, again, key. This time, I'm going to go to create sub character set option box. Just make sure. I'm going to go ahead and give it a name in here. Torso. Again, all keyable except. And I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, I can't spell or type today. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Character Set. And now if I came down here, you'll see that there's Misty All and then there's Sub. And you can do that for the arms and legs. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to let you do that on your own. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to pull in those reference images. I like to have it set up in my, my biframe like this. So I hit the little button over here. You can also get to it from Panels. And then you can go to Layouts and select different style layouts here. All right, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and select my side view over here, panels, orthographic side, and I'm going to go ahead and go to view. I'm going to go to 
find my image plane, import image. It's going to pop into my source images. And then right down here is my side. I want to use that one. I'm going to hit open. I'm going to scale this up. Try to get it close. Again, your character may not match the character in this reference image, and that's fine. It doesn't have to. This is just an approximation to kind of get you set in the way that you want it to be. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of line it up there, and I'm going to turn my character around. That little controller at her feet right here, if I kind of select it there, you see how it turns everything green. I am going to go and turn her around at 180 degrees. And now she's looking away from me here. So I'm going to come up here to panels, orthographic, and now I'm going to go to new and then back. Now she should be looking at me again over here to view image plane, import image. This time I'm going to pick the front image. I'm going to say open and it's going to be placed in front of her because of the way the camera was set up. I'm going to turn my graph off there so I can see everything. So it's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and push it back behind her far enough out of the way. So it's not really in the way. And I'm going to go ahead and scale that up also. And I see that I'm already over my 10 minute mark. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here in just a minute, but there's a couple things I want to show you. At least one more thing I want to show you. So I'm going to get her close here. Instead of fumbling around with it, I'll let you go ahead and get yours lined up. Okay. Now, there we go. That's done. So now what I've done is I've got two image planes here. What I want to do is I want to rename them here. I'm going to rename image plane one. I'm going to call this reference side. And I'm going to call the other one. Wow. Ah, okay. Reference side. There we go. And now I'm going to go to ref. You ever have one of those days where you just can't type? All right. Reference front. Not that I can type on regular days, but anyway. So I'm going to select the, uh, side view here and what I want to do is I want to add it to my layers down here so I can lock it out so I can't accidentally select it. So come here down here under your channel under your channel box display layers create layer from selected double click on it and this is going to be my reference side again and I'm going to hit save and say okay Apparently because I typed it in there, it won't let me do that. So we'll just call this reference side one. I'm going to hit save. And there we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and click this until I get the R. So the third box over. And right here, the V is for visibility. I can make it disappear invisible. See? Now I'm going to do the same thing for the reference front. I'm going to go ahead and come back over here to layers. I'm going to go to create layer from selected. Double click on it. And I'm going to go ahead and say reference front and I'm going to have to call this one one as well since I already have that name in there and again I'm going to lock it down with an R so I'm going to click it till I get R see I can't accidentally select it now so you can't accidentally animate it it won't be in your way you can always come back over here to your outliner to select it or you can come over here and turn R off so you can turn it and move it around like we're going to need to do okay so that's everything I wanted to show you for this video hopefully um I didn't go too fast, but you can always stop, pause, and come back. All right, thank you very much, and we will talk in the next video about getting our blocking in our initial run cycle poses. Thank you. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you later. Have a good day.